Thank you for joining us. This is the SiriusXM Marine and Peruna weather webinar. And we will stop several times throughout this webinar to answer questions as we go. All right, so first and foremost, what makes SiriusXM Marine weather different? This is up-to-date graphical weather information and forecasts that are viewed directly on your display on your boat. So on your MFD right in front of you on your boat. It's also complete coverage. So this is not cellular based, it's satellite based. And it's not limited to the range of cellular networks. As we all know, sometimes when you go offshore, usually after six miles, maybe six to 10 miles, you lose cell service. So this isn't contingent on cellular service. This is satellite based. And if you look here on the right, you can see in this blue area, that generally speaking is our satellite coverage footprint. So it's about 150 to 200 miles off of the coast. All right, so I'm Jeff Leach of the SiriusXM Marine Division based out of Washington, DC. We also have Dan Dickerson here. Uh, Dan's also based out of the Washington, DC office and he covers uh, marine and aviation. I and we have Tim Moore with us uh, with the uh, Furuno team joining us as well. So Tim will, will chime in uh, as we go through uh, these slides. Okay, so let's jump right in. Um, if you've got your Furuno, Furuno plotter on, uh, when you turn it on, you're gonna see a Sirius XM button over on the side. And if you select that button, it's gonna take you to this, which is the uh, actually Sirius XM audio page. But the reason that I recommend you bring this up is because it's always important to check your signal strength and check your radio ID. Uh, you can see in the upper right hand corner, it's giving us only one bar. So when we took this shot, the signal wasn't very good. So our reception might not be so good. Um, so that's just something to keep an eye on. And also, um, if you have a brand new unit, um, or if you have a unit that's been turned off all winter, you're going to need to send it a signal to wake it up. And by going to channel zero, you can select the channel down button right here. It's going to take you to channel zero. This is your radio ID number. That's kind of like the phone number by which we talk to Sirius XM receivers. Uh, you can call us or you can go to SiriusXM.com slash refresh and you can send a signal to that ID number that wakes it up. So if it's a brand new unit, we're setting up an activation or if it's coming out of, of suspension, uh, you can locate that ASN right there. Uh, and then that's the method by which we send signal to the unit. Another important note about the Furuno device, when you first get a Furuno and activate it, um, you need to make sure that you're tuned to, um, that it's going to use the Sirius XM weather service. And there is one other step. The default when you first turn, fire up a Furuno is going to be for Furuno weather. And Tim, I'll, I'll let you talk for a moment for a little bit about Furuno weather. All right. Thanks, Dan. So what Furuno weather is, is essentially uh, uh, internet-based weather, like Jeff mentioned earlier. So one of the things we like to recommend the people who might be using it is you can connect the TZ touch to the hotspot on your phone or to the Wi-Fi at your marina or your house. And essentially what you're doing is you're downloading live weather at that moment. And uh, you can download up to 14 days of weather, but at that point it becomes a forecast. So it doesn't, while it offers a lot of good information, you have to have that connection to keep the live, or the live weather going. Uh, the minute you get offshore, you, you know, you kind of lose that. You're just looking at a forecast at that point. But the other nice thing about nav center weather is it can be used worldwide. So that's just one of the things we wanted to mention to everybody. Yeah, and that brings up a point about our service, Sirius XM service. Uh, a lot of people think because it's satellite based that it's worldwide and it's not. Our satellites are what they call geostationary. That means they're hovering over North America at all times. And that's why we have that satellite footprint that Jeff showed you a few slides back. So what you'll need to do with your Bruno is you need to choose the Sirius XM weather uh, from this menu. And then once you have that, it's gonna show up and you're gonna see your, your weather elements start to be uh, listed here. Uh, but you, you don't need to go any further than, with them right here. Just make sure that it says weather data server is Sirius XM. Uh, there is also in the setup menu an area, the last line down on the, in the Furuno settings, you can go into initial setup. If you're not sure your system is working properly, there are some diagnostics that you can go take a look at. The weather diagnostic, for example, goes in and it gives you this screen 
And what that is, that's counts of packets of data information that we're sending. So if you go to this screen and the numbers are going up from zero, that means it's working, it's bringing in the data. If it's all zeros, then we have a problem and it's probably time to talk to somebody at uh, Garmin support, uh, Bruno support or Sirius XM tech support. And Dan, a uh, quick update for you. If you could speak a little closer to the mic, I think you'll be a little louder. All right, I'll see what I can do. Oh, much better, much better. All right, so starting to talk about where we're getting our weather from. So the weather is, is coming from all different sources, the National Weather Service, NOAA. Um, there's independent companies that provide us with sea surface temperature. Um, all that data is, is aggregated by the folks over at the Weather Channel for us. And they also provide us with our custom uh, marine uh, forecasts for wind and wave and barometric pressure. They have a, a forecast that they do that's exclusive to the Sirius XM subscribers. And the data updates at different rates. So crucial data, critical data like lightning and storms update about every two to five minutes. Your wind and wave info comes in about every 20 minutes. The, the forecasts uh, come in about every hour or so. Um, and then sea surface temperature updates about every hours. Now we do resend some of this information a little bit more frequently, but it is broken up so we can get a lot of information down that small pipe from a satellite to a very small antenna on your boat. Uh, when you first turn the unit on though, you should see weather uh, information start to appear within five to 10 minutes. And then over the course of the next hour or so, everything else will finish populating. So, once you've got set up, you know you're getting data, it's, 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 uh, you're activated, uh, you've got this weather button on your home screen. That's where you're gonna go to look at the weather layers. So we go there and it's gonna bring up the, uh, the charting screen, show the vessel on the chart. And then what you need to do is swipe up from the bottom and that brings in, you into the area where you can turn the weather information off and on. So. For instance, we're going to turn on US radar and you can see some just showed up in the background. Uh, we also recommend that you turn on the weather data and advanced weather data buttons here. And we'll go into a, that in a little bit more detail in a moment. So jumping back to the, the screen now that you've turned on that uh, weather, here is what you're going to see. You're going to see what rain looks like um, and you can actually click like I've done here is tapped on screen and it brings up this box that gives you even more information about the, the storm in that area. Uh, the, uh, the DBZ rating at the bottom, that's basically the intensity. So the higher the number, the, the more severe the storm is. You can also swipe up on this box and then you can go to these advanced data features that we talked about. So we're gonna go to advanced and turn on lightning. Now you can see that there are lightning strikes showing up, especially near where, the, where it's raining harder. And I say raining harder because you're looking at yellows and reds and oranges. That indicates the intensity of the rain. Uh, light green is light rain, and it goes to dark green to yellow and on up to red. Or if you're in Northern climates, you'll see some pinks and purples, and that's when the water gets hard. We don't like it up there. So just another little uh, item about lightning. Jeff, uh, Tim, I'll let you chime in here. All right, thanks, Dan. So one of the, my favorite parts about the way Furuno handles lightning uh, through the Sirius XM receiver is we can use the, or uh, tell you the lightning interval. So we have essentially three settings. Uh, lightning intervals between zero to five minutes, between five and 10 minutes, and between 10 and 15 minutes. So you can, you know, see the severity of the lightning and how often it's happening in any specific area you touch on. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's like a clock face right on that symbol. So you don't even have to bring up this box. You can just glance at that clock face and see how old the strike is. Um, and it's interesting, uh, lightning strike data is captured worldwide and is in our feed, even though we don't go you know, worldwide, you can still scan out on your plotter. And where this is important is for those of you, especially like down in the Bahamas or somewhere, radar, only reaches about 185 miles out of Miami. So we can only see a storm 185 miles out of Miami, but we can see lightning a lot farther. So if you happen to see a, a cluster of lightning out there and it's moving your direction over time, then you know there's probably a lot more associated with it. I always say where there's smoke, there's fire. 
So another thing that we display is what we call storm cast or storm information. And that's these magenta colored little arrow in, uh, symbols that you see on screen. And what those identify are cells within a large storm that break out and have more intensity. So here's an example of that information. You can see where the cells are and they naturally show up kind of where the lightning strikes are and everything else. And you can see they're going different directions, which is, it's good. It's just a, a quick way for you to see if you're trying to get between two cells, just try to stay out of the worst of it, uh, these symbols uh, should be kept an eye on. So next we're, we're, we're animating and Tim, I'll let you talk about how this works. So, you know, as you see, Dan, we got this, um, file going, and it's a very short file. You see it's only covering about a half hour of uh, weather movement, uh, but there's a lot of different things you can do on this screen. For instance, to get it animated like you have it right now, you simply push the play button. Right now we're looking at the pause button in the lower left-hand corner, and that gets the animation going. If you tap it again, it'll pause it. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can use this. You can let it cycle through like it's doing right now. Uh, you can also, one of the ways I use it, and I'm not saying it's the right way, it's just the way that I use it because I don't like to wait for anything. I'm very impatient. You can actually tap on the time bar and slide your finger along it to animate it yourself. So you can move it at whatever speed you want to move it at, or you can use the buttons within the box. So we have the play button, we have the move forward button and move backward button. The time clock is for Furuno's own um, now rad radar, so it's not really used within Sirius, but the other four buttons do function effectively. And if you wanna move it in slower increments, you can hit that play pause button on the far left-hand side, and that lets you choose between increments of 15 minutes, an hour, three hours, and five hours. Okay. Okay, so here's where we stop for questions, and it doesn't sound like so far, I think we've, probably answered everybody's questions so far. So, but just a reminder that if you do have questions as we go through these slides, um, go ahead and type them in. Um, we may unmute people at the very, very end if they're questions, but um, please uh, but chat us with questions and we will stop and, and answer whatever you have. Okay, so moving on, now we're gonna talk a little bit about wind. And again, to get your wind to show up, you, you drag, slide this box up, box up so you're looking at the weather data and we're gonna tap on the weather data button and then we're gonna turn the wind information on. So this is what wind is gonna look like on your screen. And there's uh, different symbols and different colors. Um, typically, uh, the, uh, we call, refer to this as a wind barb um, and it points into the wind. So here's an example of 15 knots out of the east southeast. I'm, the arrow is pointing to that. Looks like an upside down letter F. Um, it's got a, a, a long tit on the end and then a short one underneath over top of it in this case since it's upside down. Um, and that's indicating the speed. And then the long shafted part gives you the direction of the wind. So here's an example of 20 knots out of the south. And then over here we have uh, five to nine knots out of the west. And I mentioned five to nine. Uh, Tim, I'll let you elaborate on that a little bit. Something exclusive to Furuno. Absolutely. So we got all these different colors. Uh, and I do appreciate you, Dan, for putting that legend up on the left-hand side because the colors are easy to forget. Uh, but yeah, you can look at it. And the, you know, the color is purely dependent upon speed. So we got less than five knots, five to nine knots, nine to 14, 14 to 19. And of course, red being above 19 knots. So you can quickly look at the screen. And as long as you remember the colors, uh, get an immediate idea of uh, what the wind is doing in any particular area and know how to avoid it. Hey, right. Tim, can you tell us where somebody would find a legend with those, uh, with those colors? Uh, well, actually, there's two places. You can either find it in the manual with the unit or you can find it in the manual on the unit. Um, I don't want you to go all the way back to the front, but all the TZ Touch units have the manuals built into them. So that's really the quickest and easiest way to find it. Got it. And if anybody on this call wants to learn more about that, just chat us. And at the end of this uh, presentation, we can go Absolutely. back and, and talk about that. Yeah. You, the, talking about the color change, it, it, right where the boat position is, is, is a good indicator. You can see it's a light blue and there's a dot. That means the winds are light and variable. So virtually no wind. And then they're at five knots. And then the dark blue is at a 10. And then there's a purple 
at a, at the, with that same barb. So it's, it, you, you can, you know, differentiate between zero and five and, and, and 10 very easily. So next we talk about wave. We've gone back to our box and we turn on in the uh, weather data box, we turn on the wave information. So what we're seeing on screen now is the color of the water represents the wave height. And you can actually tap anywhere on screen and bring up the information. Uh, so we can see here the wave height is, is 7.6 foot at this yellowish area right here. You'll also notice that buoys uh, popped up on screen when I uh, flipped to the screen. And, and I did that because I always like to use buoys as a point of reference. And actually, um, what you can do is you can go into your advanced weather data menu and you can turn the buoy information on. And then you can select a buoy and it will bring up the information that's occurring. So we saw that the, in the yellow area, the waves were seven foot. Over here by this buoy, the waves are five and a half feet and it's a little darker green. So you can start to get an idea what the different colors mean. Uh, the colors are also uh, shown in the manual. So if, if you want to learn more about what the colors mean, you can go to the manual. And as I mentioned, you can always just tap on screen and kind of get an indication of what the colors mean. That's probably the quickest and easiest way. Uh, you can also bring up more details about the buoy than just those uh, basic lines of information. And it's important to note that different buoys have different sensors on board, so they don't all give you the same thing. This buoy, for example, gives us four pieces of information at a glance. The other buoy only gave us three because it didn't have as many sensors. And then again, if there are, you know, you can bring up much more detailed information by hitting the report button. And then any, any information that's available coming from that buoy will show up here. And it, it's, it's off screen, but actually it also gives you the date when the buoy sent the information back to the weather service. Uh, and if you look at the arrows over on the left-hand side, buoys aren't always out in the water. Uh, this information is also covers uh, weather stations on land, seaman stations, for example, and typically airports. You see the airplane symbols also give us weather information uh, that you can bring up on screen. So it's just a matter of clicking on any one of those symbols. So next we go back to our weather data box and we select uh, sea surface temperature. So now uh, the color of the water no longer represents the wave height, it represents temperature. And Tim, I'll let you explain how the, the temperature settings work. Okay, so I noticed uh, when we first started, some of our part participants said they were fishermen, and that's great because this is one of the key places you might use something like that. So right now, if you look at the lower right-hand side, you see the circle with the A around it, and that indicates we're running in auto sea surface temperature mode. So right now we're letting the TZT assign the colors. But if you're a fisherman and say you're looking for tuna, and maybe you're looking for a temperature break between 68 and 70 degrees, and that's the only color you wanna see on the screen. What we can do is take that red arrow where uh, Dan just threw up on the screen and tap that button one more time. What it'll let us do is set our minimum sea surface temperature. And then if we tap it one more time, it'll let us set our max. And that's the only colors we're going to see is say between, I think whatever we just did was 60 and 82 degrees, but you can refine it as close as you want. Like I said, if tuna are running in the 68 to 70 degree range, you can manually set it to just see that on the screen. And you can follow it just like a sea surface temperature contour line. So again, you can click on screen anywhere. You see I've clicked on the yellow area and it's telling me the temperature there is 73.9 degrees. And then we move over here and it's 77 degrees. So like Tim said, do you know, if you're looking for that mahi who likes that, you wanna, that, water temperature, you probably want to be right on that edge where it goes from yellow to orange, or maybe where it goes from uh, light orange to darker orange, a little bit further to the south there. All right, we do have a couple questions. <clears throat> and um, let's first talk about animation. Um, the question is, on the animation, can it be set for a longer time period than two hours? Absolutely. Um, the, the GIF we were running on the screen was only downloaded for a short period of time. And that's why we were limited in the animation of how far it could run. Okay. Is it limited right. to a certain amount of time, Tim? Do you know the max? I do not know the max time off the top of my head, but I'll try to look into it while we're talking through the rest okay. of the slides. 
great. Yeah, I, 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 it's at least three hours, I'll tell you that. And then as we get into, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about animation and forecasting here in the next couple of slides. Good, and I think this one's for you, Dan. Um, who estimates wave height uh, apart from buoy data? And then how accurate is it knowing that it's forecasted? Well, tough one to uh, tough one to answer as far as accuracy is concerned. This is the folks at the Weather Channel are the ones that this is their forecast for wave height. That when you're looking at that color out there, so that's a that's a custom forecast done done for us by the folks at the Weather Channel using the tools from NOAA and National Weather and also the buoy data. Uh, they do take the actual data coming from the buoys into account when they're when they're providing their forecast. Okay, and I think uh, that was it for questions. Keep them coming, folks. Good questions. Okay, so next we're going to talk about barometric pressure. That's another one of the features you'll find under the weather data. So with that one turned on, you're going to see the barometric pressure information showing up. Uh, we're going to show you, as you can see in this picture, off to the left, there's a, a low pressure area, and we're seeing the, uh, the pressure shown in millibars. Uh, you can set it to show millibars or inches of mercury. Uh, that's a, a main system setting in, in the Furuno. Um, and then uh, weather fronts, you can see warm fronts. A trough uh, is going to show up, or stationary front. Um, all that information is available. So here, we've gone to layering the information. So you're seeing wave height. You're seeing your barometric pressure. You're seeing your fronts. Uh, and you're seeing your wind information. And again, this is something that can be animated. So Tim, I'll let you talk again about the animation here. Okay, so as you see right now, we have a lot going on on the screen and let's assume we have storms and other things on this screen as well. The cool thing about animation is, as Dan was showing you, where you can pick advanced weather data and just weather data. If there's too much information for you on the screen and it's not a clear enough picture for you, you can just tap on those boxes and choose what you want to see on the screen. You can take the wind away, you can take the sea surface temperature away and just animate the things you want to see so it's not overcrowded. This screen we're currently looking at right now is to me the perfect screen because it has just the right amount of information. It tells me everything that's happening around the boat, but the screen offers so many options for what you can see. If it's too much, take some away. If it's not enough for what you're looking for, just add a little bit more. All the information is always there right at your fingertips. All right, and again, this is forecast information. So this is right. looking ahead. Before we were looking at the rain, which was was a historical information, um, and the, the Furuno can play all of them through. So it'll play. It can play you the historical rain and then shift over to the forecast. Uh, the other thing is is as far as timing on this screen, uh, our forecasts. Uh, there's two types of forecasts. If you have our coastal package, you get current conditions, current forecast, and you get uh, a forecast three hours out. So this loop, once it went past the three hour mark, everything would just go blank. If you're subscribed to our offshore package, then you will receive forecast up to 48 hours out. So you'll be able to see up to two days ahead what's going on in the weather window. So next, we're gonna talk about city information. This is another just a, a nice piece of weather information that you can bring up. With this turned on, you'll see there are symbols on screen that looks like a little skyscraper. And you can click on one of these symbols and it will give you specific weather information about what's happening at that location or uh, bring up a forecast uh, like a seven day, you know, cloudy, sunny, and so forth and so on uh, for that particular city. We also do show tropical storm information on screen. So with the, the storm tracks feature turned on, you're gonna see where a, a tropical storm first originates when they first uh, assign it as a, as a name it, so to speak. And then they're also going to uh, show you the track. So you can see here, we're looking at, uh, this is where it was uh, first put on the chart on June the 1st, and then the forecast for uh, where it was going to be six days later. Uh, so that's the storm track feature. So one of the things I wanted to bring up, guys, if you ever have a technical question or any type of question Furuno can answer for you, we have a couple of ways. You can go to FurunoUSA.com, get support, and uh, we'll email you back pretty quickly. You can uh, give us a call, 
or, you know, one of the most impressive ways I've seen over the past few years that Faruna has been handling information is the Faruna USA Forum. If you go to www.farunausaforum.com, there's a lot of good information already there. And you can also ask a question of Faruna dealers, Faruna customers, and people who might already have the answer that you're looking for. But also monitoring those forums are Faruna technicians, Faruna salespeople. Uh, we just have a, we can really get back to you quickly and get you the information you're looking for. So don't miss using any one of those support devices as they can really help you get an answer quick. And also if you got any questions for Sirius XM that are technical questions, uh, just go to marine.support at SiriusXM.com and they'll answer your questions, uh, you know, that pertain to sp specifically to Sirius and XM information. Right. We can also ha handle anything like uh, if you're, if you're, if you put in for a rebate and it didn't come, or if you have questions about your subscription, or if you want to stop your service or start your service, support's always willing to help. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is marine zone forecasts. And uh, this is one of my favorite features. I know it's one of Jeff's favorite features. Uh, and, and, and what we're doing here is, is you turn on the marine zone information. And the marine zones are the, the areas that have been carved up by the, the National Weather Service. And these are, we typically listen to the VHF radio. That lovely garbled computer voice talks about uh, the weather in your area, but you have to wait to listen for it because they talk about several areas in, in sequence. And invariably I get distracted when they talk about my area and I miss it and then I'm gonna have to wait 20 minutes for them to come back around again. With this, you don't have to do that anymore. You can simply click on the spot where you wanna hear the marine zone and it'll bring it up right there on screen. You can read the text information. It's a lot easier to follow marine zones in this manner than it is listening to it on the VHF, in my opinion. There are also marine warnings. If there's a specific event happening somewhere, uh, you can bring up information about that event. Again, this is another one of the things they typically broadcast on the VHF radio. They'll come in and say there's a warning and then they'll talk about it. Um, here it's much easier because you can simply point to the area and figure out where that warning is occurring. There's also tropical information. Uh, this is uh, basic overview information for both the Pacific and Atlantic coast. You can bring up the, the tropical weather discussion, uh, which is, which is uh, continuously updated. Jeff, we got any more questions? No more questions. Um, David, we will get back in touch with you regarding animation time when uh, Tim gets to looking that up. But, um, you know, any more questions, feel free to chat us, folks. We do have a few more slides. So if there's any questions that have not been answered, uh, keep the chats coming. If needed, we can stay on and also field questions by unmuting people. But for now, let's use chat. Okay, moving right along. Some of you may have heard, for those of you who are anglers amongst us this evening, that SiriusXM is launching a fish mapping service. And uh, Furuno later this year, can't say exactly when, but later this year, Furuno will have this installed. And if we go to the previous screen, you'll notice that this fish mapping, it's a superset. So it includes all uh, the offshore weather service, as well as eight specific layers for fishing, three uh, sea surface temperature, two planktons, weed lines, uh, sea surface temperatures, um, below the surface, um, and then fishing recommendations, last but not least. And that uh, can be found at SiriusXM.com forward slash fish mapping. And here's a quick preview on the next slide, what it's going to look like overlaid on your Furuno. So stand by, keep in touch, and, um, and we will let you know exactly when this launches. But we are looking Another good reason to keep an eye on the forum too, Jeff. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect example. Exciting stuff. So equipment required. Currently, Faruna selling uh, the BBW X4. I'm sure a lot of you are probably already familiar with that if you're, you know, tuning into this uh, webinar. So what you need? Uh, Faruna TZ Touch MFD, uh, TZ Touch 2, TZ Touch 3, the newest, uh, and a network connection. You can either, you know, plug it directly into the TZ Touch, you know, if that's the only thing you're running, but you know, we assume most people are taking everything to a hub because they have multiple displays, they have a radar, they have a sounder, uh, but it's a nice easy connection. Um, the Sirius BBWX4 uh, is just a network connection. It plugs right into your hub. 
the TZ Touch, TZ Touch 2 all see it. And, you know, like we talked about at the beginning of the uh, presentation, you just have to make that selection from now rad to serious, and it's just uh, activate your account and it's up and running. Not a whole lot to it. Nice and simple install. Yep. And also, cool. the, the, the BB, BW, BBWX4 includes the antenna. The BBWX3 yes. did not. So that was an extra $100 uh, expense, and that's no longer required. It, the antenna is included with the BBWX4 in the box. Good point. And for anybody out there who is an offshore angler interested in fish mapping, the BBWX3 will not be compatible with fish mapping. You will need to update, upgrade to the BBWX4. The good news for you is it is uh, 449 and Sirius XM kicks in a hundred dollar rebate, which is very easy uh, to receive. So that, that takes the total price of that receiver down to 349. Right, so 349, um, and that's that's based on list price. I've seen it less at shows. Just saying, um, you know, be a consumer, get your best price. Uh, and for those of you viewing the webinar tonight, we also are uh, offering two months of free uh, weather and audio service just for uh, listening to us tonight. There's a, you can go to SiriusXM.com/webinar for more information. Of course, we also always like to talk about our audio service, what made SiriusXM great in the first place. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the seminar, all SiriusXM weather receivers in market today are also capable of delivering the audio, not just the weather service. Uh, you can see there's an audio output and uh, you don't need a SiriusXM ready stereo because it goes into the auxiliary port. So any stereo, or e you don't even need a stereo, you could just have an amp and come right out of this and go to your amp and then onto your speakers and all your controls can be picked up right from your Furuno screen. You can either- Absolutely, uh, if you look down in the lower right-hand corner there, you see you got a volume button up and down. Um, and as Dan's about to point out, you know, we have two different ways of looking at the, the Sirius XM screens. You can have it minimized at the bottom of your screen, shows you all the information you need. But anytime you want to get to that big screen, he's showing on the left, you just tap on the Sirius XM button in the lower left-hand corner, it brings you up to a full screen, and Dan will tell you what happens there. <laughs> yep, so that, and then again, you have the, the option of all of our channels, um, and you can set up favorites and, and, and so forth. So, pricing. Jeff, I think you were going to talk about pricing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just a quick uh, pricing. Uh, so the coastal package, by the way, that this is the package that has the two-month trial. It's it's thirty-four ninety-nine a month. The offshore package uh, is fifty-nine ninety-nine a month. And when fish mapping comes out, remember it's a superset, so it includes all of offshore weather plus those eight dedicated fish mapping features, and that's ninety-nine a month. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you do pair your uh, entertainment or your radio together with your weather under the same uh, subscription, you get a discount. So your select radio would be $11.99 a month, and then all access would be $16.99 a month, and roughly that's a $5 a month uh, saving. And then, of course, for those of you who put your boat up on the hard for a portion of the season, or maybe you're getting work done, or frankly, maybe you're just not even using your boat for a period of time during the year, there's no sense in paying for your subscription if you're not using it. We recommend that you do a seasonal suspend and it is as simple as calling in and letting uh, the call agent know exactly when you want your service suspended. And then of course, when you want it woken back up in, at which time we will send a signal and, and uh, wake it up with a refresh signal. So that can be done for up to six months and much better to do this than to deactivate because you don't have to go through the whole reactivation process. And of course you don't have to pay the reactivation fee. Also keep in mind when you're seasonally suspending, there is absolutely no cost to you at that time. So everything literally just suspends until you're ready to wake it back up. All right, as far as getting started, for those of you who are not activated right now, fairly easy. First of all, you have to confirm uh, and, and buy the compatible hardware, the BBWX4 in this case. Choose your subscription package that we just reviewed and then visit SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Activate or call this 855 number. Um, we recommend that you call this number. So if you are not a subscriber now, I would suggest jotting this down or going to our website 
If you call the SiriusXM main number, you could be speaking to somebody internationally that is not very familiar with our Marine and Aviation Division. So this specific number will get you to a call center person in the Marine and Aviation Divi Division. Or if you don't make it to the call center, uh, simply ask to be transferred. Tell them you're, you're calling about a subscription for a boat and they can transfer you to the Marine team. There you go. All right, some helpful resources for you. SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine. Or we have a video library. We will be posting this webinar there. We do have other videos there. And that's SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Library. And then last but not least, our YouTube channel. Uh, and that's YouTube.SiriusXMMarine.com. Dan and I are creating and posting videos there on a regular basis. And then we'd love for you to follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash SiriusXM Marine or our Instagram page, which is at SiriusXM underscore Marine. And then uh, last but not least, just as a refresher, uh, if there's any questions, go ahead and chat those now. But we did want to leave you guys with the support information. Again, if you have any questions about SiriusXM Marine, it's marine.support at SiriusXM.com. And of course, if you have any Furuno questions, FurunoUSA.com, get support, forward slash get support. Um, also, as Tim mentioned previously, join the Furuno forum, FurunoUSAForum.com. All right, we will stick around for just another minute or two. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to chat them to us now. And again, thank you all for joining us. Hopefully we uh, were thorough enough to get through this and didn't rush too fast.